Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a situation where you've made a bunch of profit, but you've given almost all of it back to the market in a really short period of time? If so, we're gonna dive into that issue today and talk about why that's happening and what you can do to stop it from happening again. you like that story i was uh yeah if you guys didn't see it right first of all shame on you right why am i doing it if you don't support me horrible you should feel bad about yourself but i got a a, a series of questions from a trader on instagram who's saying hey kill i go to these streaks where i go i have like one or two weeks where i'm killing the markets i'm slaying them i'm extracting profit like nobody's business and then I give 60 to 70% of it back in a few days. He's like, so I'm in profit for two weeks and then I give it back in two days. And I'm like, ooh, that's not good. Well, there's a problem. He's like, what, what am I doing wrong? And of course I'm like, I have an idea of what you're doing wrong, but I need, I need to know more details. And, and we, we end up conversing and whatnot and well, I guess first and foremost, what do, for you guys that didn't didn't see the video, what what would first stand out to you about that? Hot streak for you know winning for one or two weeks gives most of it back in one or two days. What what, what would you think the the problem is there? Houston, we have a problem. Do we have a problem here? For you guys familiar with the the film. Don't be a menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. Classic comedy. Do we have a problem here? What do you guys think it is? Greg says probably inconsistencies. Too much risk taken in two days. Yeah, that, that was my first thought. My first thought is that it was either a psychological and or risk management problem. My thought was this. This is what you usually see. Trader goes on a hot streak starts feeling himself what happens to that position size what happens to that position size when you start feeling yourself you start increasing it because you're the man now interestingly enough right this can come in a positive and negative way this is you know again i told you last week we we talked a lot about risk management and money management strategies it started with the, the the january review video and then on the trader coffee break we had a good conversation and even showed the money management uh, or talked about money management the difference between fixed percentage risk and fixed position risk and there are pros and cons we, we spoke again if you haven't seen that conversation make sure you do it. it it's again just i think it's called money management strategies trader coffee break channel whatever like that but we, we, we talked about one of the benefits of using a fixed position size is that it allows you to implement a money management strategy, right? And that's the whole spreadsheet and whatever smooth ratio money management that we teach you here at tier one. But that money management spreadsheet or tactic, right? It is a double-edged sword, right? It could be, it's like any other weapon, right? It's like a gun. A gun could be used to do horrible things. It could also be used to protect you right? Um, all depends on how you use it. You can use that position sizing strategy to drastically increase your account size, right? Accelerate your account growth. However, if you're too aggressive with your position sizing strategy, what also can happen? What's the negative side? Right? It can blow your account up really, really quick. I've shown you times and times again where, again, I'll, I'll, I'll put in my numbers for like the previous year and then I'll show you what I made and then I'll crank it up and I'll be like, look, guys, this 40% return I had, I could have had a 500% return. And there's always a trader that's like, Akil, you're crazy. Why wouldn't you do that, you stupid idiot, right? And it's like, well, in order to make that 500% return, there was like a 40% a, a drawdown in there from one of my cold streaks. Is that worth it? And the whole thing is, you know, when you want to be risk averse and, 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 you know, conservation of capital. So my first thought was that this trader got on a hot streak, increased his position size, and then increased his position size right into a cold streak because you think about it like this as well, right? As traders, we backtest. Backtesting allows us to know our numbers. 
right? And you you as you trade for more years, you start to have a really good idea of what your uh, your win percentage is, right? So I know I'm about a at my best, right? I'm about a sixty percent trader, right? Like overall, when it when it when it's all said and done, right? So if I have so theoretically, I should win six out of every ten trades, right? So if I have six wins in a row, am I closer to a my next trade? Is it closer to being a win or a loss? Again, obviously, we never know the exact answer, but just going by the numbers, if I win six in a row, I'm, I'm probably closer to a loss than a win, right? So if you're drastically increasing your position size at the end of a hot streak, what you're doing is you're essentially risking more as you're closer to losing, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. Now, there are, not to go off on a whole rant, there are lots of money management strategies out there as well that say like, you should decrease your position size as you win more and increase your position size as you lose more because of that stuff. I'm not necessarily a believer in that. Um, but, I mean, those are things to entertain, I, I, I guess. Um, but that was my initial thought with this trader. Is like, hey, he got a hot streak and he started feeling himself, got a little cocky, increased that position size and started losing. I've been through that myself with the, when I managed money. And that time I told you I lost about $30,000 in the better part of a week, right? That was all because of increasing a position size after a hot streak, right into a losing streak. It wasn't my plan, but at the time, the client was always right. So that was my initial thought. Um, But that actually wasn't the case. The case was this. And real quick, Gregory says, it creates a psychological roller coaster as well when you lose more than what uh, then you want to revenge trade. Yeah, it, 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 yep. It's like it's a snowball effect, right? Once it starts going, it, it yep, it, it loses more. Then you need to, you know, then you, you got to get revenge. You got to win more, right? So when you try to win more, you start forcing trades and doing stuff you're not supposed to do. And many people don't understand. You don't understand this until you go through it. In order to pull yourself out of a drawdown, like if you lose 10% in a drawdown, you can't just win 10% back. You got to actually gain more than that back if you're risking the same percent size of your account to actually be back to break even so you feel that pressure and, and yeah it just oops, sorry it just goes downhill from there um but what this trader was actually doing was this it, w- it was really it was all fear based but so when he when he was on these hot streaks his hot streaks would only be like one or two trades and he would have one or two good trades and then stop trading because he was afraid that a loss was going to come, right? So you win twice, you make this money, and now you're scared to death because you don't want to give it back. So he would have these good trades, but then he would just pass up on the rest of the good trades because he would be afraid that he would lose. But then when he would get these losers, right, he'd start trading more. Because he wanted to, as Gregory mentioned, he wanted to make it back. So he, he, would, the, 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 he would accelerate these losses by taking lots of losses at the same time. Because each time he lost, he would try to get revenge and enter other trades that probably weren't good trades. And then lose more and more and more and more and more. But then when he had those winners, he would stop because he was afraid of the losses. Yep, so missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. And we have to understand this, right? Our winners, the, the, the job of our winners is to provide a cushion for our losers, right? I say it every year, right? I'm off to another hot streak this year where I'm, I'm hitting at whatever, I think 70%, whatever like that. I'm up 10%, um, added a little bit last week, maybe 11% for the year here in February, right? That's not the norm. 10% a month and hitting at 70% is not the norm for me. I don't mean to be pessimistic. I, I, I will, if I, if I can be 70% and make 10% every month, you may not see me for a few months. I, I may pull a JC Gray so to just disappear for a little bit. If, if I can, if I can sustain this for the entire year, right? Probably not going to happen, right? If I can, if I can sustain this until October, I guarantee you won't see me November or December. I am gone. I ain't giving none of it back. Everything I just said, I'll be a hypocrite. Everything I just said, I'm not giving any of it back. I'm shutting down my trading because I I don't want to revert to the mean in the last two months of the market. 
I will purposely get myself sick and fail my pre-market checkup so I don't have to come in and trade. I, I, I will break my fingers so I can't use my keyboard. I, I'm willing to go to the, the, the furthest extent not to sabotage myself. I ain't playing with you guys. I'm not playing. I will, I will break all these fingers. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Can't execute a trade if my fingers don't work, right? <laughs> uh. <laughs> but seriously, so it, it, I, it, I don't expect to sustain that. So I, I know that I'm going to give some back. You guys that have been with me for a while, you see it every year, right? I'll start off hot and then I'll hit this funk and I'll be like, here we go, guys. Here's the drawdown. Right. But the job of these winners, the job, like why I'm not stopping right now, why I'm not saying, ooh, 10 percent, let's stop trading. That's good is because I, I know I'm going to give it back. I don't know when I'm going to give it back. So my job is to get as much as I can while I'm on this hot streak. Right. I'm not sabotaging myself, not taking stuff early. I'm taking what I'm supposed to take. I'm not doing anything extra, but I'm going to get as much as I can because it's going to provide my cushion. So when I have that cold streak, when you guys see me hit that 5 7% drawdown, hopefully not 7%, but when you see me hit that 5% drawdown, that takes me down and I'm still in profit. Instead of giving 60 or 70% of everything back, I'm still in profit. Because drawdowns don't last. Drawdowns are just kind of like uh, the waiting room before the next hot streak comes. So my job is just, or our job as traders, is just to survive it. Don't go broke during the drawdown. Survive it surv and then survive to the next extension up. Survive the pullback. That's all, that's all it is. But yeah, it, it was an interesting. You usually don't hear that. Usually my, my guess is, is typically that it's, it's bad risk management. Um... But this was a fear, a, f a fear of losing money and then revenge of needing to make it back. Um, and hopefully our words help this trader. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting story. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Remember, follow me on social media at Akil Stokes RTM. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on what else am I on? I'm on Twitter. I'm on TikTok. Just watch out for any of the fakes out there. If I ever DM you or if I ask for money or to manage an account, it is not me. Report it. Send me a snapshot or a screenshot so I can share it as well. But aside from that, feel free to reach out. I don't bite. I love answering questions. And just like in this interview, many of the questions that you ask become topics of my YouTube video and my Trading Coach podcast.